night skies are beautiful, filled with stars, comets, and our moon. But it would have been way more magnificent, only if our eyes could see a wider spectrum of electromagnetic waves. When a bazillion amounts of stellar gases, start attracting each other, due to gravitational force, new solid objects are formed, in billions. At the center of all this formation, a huge number of stars collide and form a supermassive black hole, and thus a new galaxy is born. Every stellar object in this universe has angular momentum, in other words, they are spinning. Thus, when the supermassive black hole is absorbing all the mass near it, the objects falling into the black hole do not follow a straight path. They start closing in on the black hole in a circular or elliptical path due to the conservation of angular momentum. All the matter falling into the black hole follows a similar path and as a result, an accretion disk is formed. As the massive gravitational forces of the black hole traverse through space and time, more and more stellar masses are added to the accretion disk. An object in the accretion disk faces a ton of friction, created due to continuous collision with particles. This friction produces astronomical amounts of energy which is emitted as radiation. The radiation is only detected when the amount of mass in the accretion disk is pretty high and that is only possible when the galaxy is young. This magnificently bright astronomical object, thus created, is known as quasar. But, just how much energy does a quasar have? If a quasar was at the same distance to the Earth as that of the Sun, then the quasar would shine a thousand times brighter than our Sun. Yes, your ray bands would be obsolete. Back in the 1950s, the radio telescope, a special type of telescope, which is capable of observing electromagnetic waves outside the range of the visible spectrum, was invented. When it was pointed at the sky, a huge number of bright spots lit up in the images processed from it, which did not correspond to images from telescopes built for the visible spectrum. This was the first time that scientists discovered the presence of quasars. At first, they appeared like stars, but later, after intensive studies, it was determined that these bright spots, brighter than a few of the closest stars, yet invisible to the naked eyes were centers of young galaxies. These were named, quasars, or, quasi-stellar radio sources. When the magnetic field of the supermassive black hole and the energy of the accretion disk interact, strong electromagnetic radiation is shot out from the poles of the black hole. Thus, quasars, are sometimes found to shoot high-energy beams from the top and bottom. Physics alert! You have been warned. When a particle is moving closer to us, the electromagnetic wave emitted from it undergoes something called a blue shift, where its frequency increases, whereas when it moves away, the electromagnetic radiation undergoes redshift, and the frequency decreases. Images of quasars from the radio telescopes appear to be redder in color, or redshifted. This means that most quasars are moving away from Earth and the universe expands. Quasars are only formed when a galaxy is young or when two galaxies collide. The closest quasar to our Earth is the Markarian 231, which is powered by two supermassive black holes, furiously spinning around each other. It's very difficult to say what will happen when they do collide, even supercomputers are unable to completely process the outcome of the whole event, but rest assured, we won't be around to witness the changes. If you like the video, hit subscribe and share it with your friends. Stay tuned to Explified and check out the other video related space and travel on our channel. See you in the next one.